a little bit about we're gonna so today is basically just a design save 101 we're gonna give you guys a rundown of how design safe is set up talk about some of the key features uh, some basic usability and what a basic uh, workflow looks like and then we'll see if we can field some questions if you guys have any questions once again just jump on the chat board and, and ask away all right some introductions here so I am Charlie Day uh, my email is there on that slide, charlie at tac.utexas.edu. I'm the Director of Training and Professional Development here at TAC. I'm also the Design Safe Training Lead. Uh, so if you guys have any questions regarding the training or if there's more, uh, there's a particular type of training you guys would like to see or like to have, uh, feel free to contact me and we'll see if we can get something like that arranged. All right, so a little bit about what Design Safe is about and what, the great what our greater vision is of what Design Safe will be. Uh, so design safe is a cyber infrastructure meaning it's a portal online uh, what we like it to become is a integral part of your research discovery work cycle meaning we want you to be able to come to design safe use the tools use the data that's available uh, and uh, do your analysis do your collaboration and unlocking what uh, what the data is unlocking the story that's inside the data of uh, basically unlocking the power of the big data. We want to be able to su support the end-to-end -end work search. Work search. Uh, we want to be able to understand what your research workflow is, uh, what your research workflow does, and how you can collaborate with other uh, design-safe researchers. Um, so we want to be able to, so in a nutshell, we want you to come here to collaborate, uh, come here and conceptualize, build your data and publish your data and then of course reconceptualize from some of the published data that's out there and continuing on this giant life cycle of research um, and of course we want to enhance that plot amplify and link the capabilities of other NERI components into design safe this is going to be kind of like a one-stop shop for all of NERI so design safe is built to enable research in the uh, in the realm of natural hazards, all right? And to do this, what we've done is we're bringing, bringing together the simulation research, the experimental research, and the rapid research, uh, more on that here in a little bit, bring all that research together, bring all that data together, and put that in what we're calling the data depot. Uh, and in that data depot, you can then uh, share data with other scientists, you'd be able to, um, share data with the community at large, you'd be able to publish your data, get a what we call a DOI, which is essentially a, uh, a number that, I, that distinctly identifies your data for citing purposes. And then of course, being able to do uh, your research, do your analysis, do your visualization, uh, run data analysis scripts, do queries, and then save that back to the depot and then start the cycle again. Right, so that is our main goal of Design Safe. So to do that, we need to build a community, and one of the big, big methods that we've chosen to build this community on, at least build these, uh, what we call communication channels, is a using Slack. And Slack is a communication tool that we use for Design Safe, but it's a little bit more than that. It's also kind of like a personal assistant in some ways. Uh, so TAC has Teams. There is a Design Safe Slack team at designsafe-ci.slack.com. Uh, you should be able to get a invitation after this uh, webinar, or perhaps already gotten the invitation. I do suggest you joining Slack. Uh, there are lots of topics of discussion. Anybody can create a channel for a topic of discussion. You can have private conversations, and of course. There are channels on certain webinars. We had a data curation webinar not too long ago, and you can go to that channel and read the discussion was. Uh, there is also a general channel for this, uh, this webinar in particular. So any general questions, you can go there and ask. Uh, you can also do fun little things like remind me. You can set up a time to remind you a certain message, and you'll get a notification on your phone if you use the application. Uh, you can do uh, site-wide searches. You can uh, pin certain conversations, you can highlight certain conversations, you can select words that you, some keywords that you'd like to be notified on whenever that keyword arises. Uh, for example, you might be interested in hurricanes. So you can set up a 
keyword search on hurricanes, and any time that conversation comes up, you'll be notified on Slack that there's a conversation pertaining to that keyword. And of course, the fun, there's little fun little things too, like animated GIFs, uh, which you know you can kind of do a couple Google searches around and figure it out. Anyways, once again, after, the pre after this presentation's over, uh, we'll continue the conversation on Slack for a little while. And that URL for that Slack team is designsafe-ci.slack.com. Okay, so where to get started? I think what we'll probably do is we're gonna do a walkthrough on DesignSafe, uh, talk about the capabilities, and then like I said, we'll jump online and do a demonstration. Uh, this is just to give you guys an idea of what DesignSafe can do for you. Where to get started and how to get help? Well, uh, on Design Saves main page, there is a help drop down menu. Uh, select that drop down, and inside there, you'll be able to submit tickets. You'll be able to read the frequently asked questions. Uh, we have put together a getting started uh, handbook, and then there's the user guides as well. Uh, so that's the best place to go if you need help. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our walkthrough, and then we'll jump into our demo. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to jump into the chat channel and ask questions. We have plenty of, of, of uh, researchers here at TAC uh, to be able to answer those. Okay, so to get started, there is a login page. All right, so you're gonna need to log in and sign up for an account on DesignSafe. Uh, the DesignSafe login page leads to uh, a what we might refer to as TAC credentials. So if you log in to uh, hit the DesignSafe button, there is a button for TAC. You can, can log, you can click log in using your TAC account. Or if you don't have a TAC account, you can follow the register, uh, you can register for one by following that link. And it'll ask you some questions and just answer those questions through. And you'll get your TAC account and be able to log in and use DesignSafe. So when you first come into DesignSafe, you'll land on our uh, dashboard. This dashboard gives you some quick information about any jobs that you have ran, uh, how many applications are currently available, how much data you're using, how much data you're storing, uh, there you can manage your account. Uh, you can jump to other parts of Design Safe, uh, and you can go to our training sites and see what kind of training pages we have. You also get an update to be able to view tickets. You can create tickets there as well. Uh, and of course, you got a list of some of the recent apps that you've ran. So the first main part of Design Safe, if you remember that flow chart I showed you at the very beginning, the main part of the Design Safe, heart of Design Safe, is the data depot. All right. The data depot is our data repository. And, and it holds more than just data. It is anything that, re, that you are needed to be able to do your research. Uh, so the data depository is, uh, the data depot is a multi-purpose repository. It's for your experimental data. It'll hold your simulation data, any field data that you've uploaded in. Uh, it's got a flexible data model, meaning we don't want to uh, pigeonhole you into a particular way of setting up your data. Basically, if it works well for you, we don't want to be able to, we don't want to change that, that uh, we don't want to change that. We want you to be able to use uh, what you're comfortable with. And the idea behind the Data Depot is to discover, publish, curate, upload and download any data. All right, so let's look into the Data Depot a little bit. If you jump into the Data Depot, the first place you get to is your My Data, all right? Your My Data is a place where your data is stored. That's every, that is your space. You have folders, uh, you can load experiments, you can load up your projects, you can, create, you can create folders, you can share data with other community members, you can collaborate with your data with other community members. It's essentially everything that, re, that is required of you to do your research, you can do inside the, data, uh, inside the data depot. If you look at it, the data depot is structured very similar to a, uh, a folder, a folder view or on, uh, on your local machine. And that's done on purpose because we want that to be kind of a comfort level of where you see things. Um, there's also a place called My Projects. Now, My Projects is essentially a collection of files and folders that you want to be able to share and collaborate with with other people. All right. So you can create a project. You can copy in your information, copy in your folders, copy in your data, and then add other people to the project. You can add other PIs, you can add other collaborators, and you can dictate what level of access uh, these other users have against the data that you've created. These projects are meant, meant to grow. Uh, they're meant to be curated, meaning you can actually go in there and supply metadata and make the data look, uh, make the data more understandable to you. 
And you can also then be able to publish projects. Now, the way the publication works, and there will probably be future webinars on publishing data, uh, but the way the publication publishing works is you curate your data, you, met, you add your metadata, you add your collaborators, and then you go in and say, all right, I'm ready to publish this data set. So you take that data set and you basically encapsulate it. It kind of closes it off and makes that data set now read-only. You publish it out there. It assigns what we call a DOI, which identifies that data, and it gives you a link that you can then cite the data in your works. And then once that is set up, that is now data set is now frozen. Any additions or changes you make to that data, you can continue making to your project. But then once you want to publish it again, you get a whole new DOI. So essentially, it's almost like versioning it. OK. Um, you also notice that we can link to other cloud providers. Now, the ones we have links to right now is Box.com, Dropbox, and your Google Drive. Now, these are, are not synced folders, meaning once you copy a folder into one of the uh, design safe uh, cloud providers, isn't, it does not automatically copy the information into design safe. You still actually have to go there, open up the folder, and then be able to bring the data through or copy the, copy the data out or you know, drag and drop. Uh, but what you can do is set up a synced folder with your local machine. So you can sync a folder from your local machine to one of the cloud providers and then go into um, Design Safe and copy those folders out or copy those files and folders out of box.com and into Design Safe. Now there's also a thing called published data. Now published data is data that started out as a project, may have started out as a project, and has been curated and has been published with a DOI. And these, also some of these published data is what's been um, brought in through one of the older, uh, older versions like MESUB, for example. And this data is available to, for public consumption. So you do not need a design safe account to link to these data sets or to browse these data sets or to, um, or to view them. And the last thing we have uh, under my data is community data. Uh, so the way I think about community data is, is this is public avail publicly available data, but it is uncurated. It is essentially a, a, a collection of, of scripts, a collection of data files, a collection of Jupyter notebooks, of images. It's anything that has been deemed interesting by the uh, design safe community, but is kind of an informal setting. So it's not formal like published data, it's kind of informal. And the idea is, all right, now we can have a place to be able to put example Jupyter Notebooks. So somebody can say, oh, hey, how did, how did you do this? Well, you can look in community data and see how it's done. Or it's data that might be of, of usefulness in a piece of another project. So I can publish, some, publish a script there that I may want, that the design safe community may want to be able to uh, mimic and add to their projects. So it's basically an informal folder to share with the rest of the community. It is a read-only file uh, folder. If you wish to publish something to the community data, the best thing to do is sit, fill, up a tick, fill out a ticket and say, hey, I have this data that's available. I'd like to uh, publish that to the community because I think it'd be useful. All right. So now, of course, I've, I've talked about a bunch of different data, uh, but talked about my data. And I've I mentioned a few times about uploading data to the my, my data place at the Data Depot in Design Safe. Um, the question is, how do you get your data here? So these are, are kind of rules and sizes and some of the limitations of the different uh, tools we have to copy data in. So we have the Design Safe Data Depot, where you can essentially upload files and, and folders and copy them directly into Design Safe. Now, Usually, um, when you're going to be using the data depot directly, the idea is going to be to upload a small number of files. So say if you have less than 25 files you want to bring in, uh, and they're smaller size files. So each file is approximately less than 100 megabytes. You can probably have no problems using the data depot to bring the data in. However, if you have a larger amount of files, and by larger amount of files, I mean over 25 meg or greater than 100 megabytes, what you want to do is use uh, 
Globus. So what Globus is, is a third party application that allows you to sign up for an account. It then links a folder or links your local machine and then you could automatically build large amounts of files from your local machine to through Globus and then into uh, the back end of Design Safe. So essentially it's a direct route to be able to get your data in. And it's for a large number of files and folders, so say over 25 folders uh, or files, and each file or, uh, has an average greater than 100 megabytes. Uh, we also give you a command line interface, so you can uh, use rsync or scp. There's also a command line tool. Uh, we've also introduced uh, a middleware software called Agave. You may be able to use that. Um, there, for future reference, there is a data transfer guide, and there's also the Globus, Globus data transfer guide that I suggest you're reading through. It might look uh, kind of, uh, it might be a little overwhelming at first, especially trying to figure out how to use Globus, but quite honestly, once you start reading through the instructions, it's actually a pretty much a piece of cake. It's a very easy routine to follow. Okay, so now that we have data inside the data depot, uh, what you want to be able to now do is, of course, run an experiment or run a simulation against that data or do some analysis against that data. Uh, that is all done in what we call the discovery workspace. Okay, Discovery workspace is built to be able to do your data analysis, your uh, simulations. It also gives you a, very, uh, a, a popular rate range of open source simulation codes that we have, like OpenSeas or AdCERC. We also have some commercial tools like MATLAB and some data processing tools, uh, for example, MATLAB and, and uh, Jupyter Notebooks. We also give you some nice little archiving, uh, some um, tools to be able to compress your data or archive your data or to uncompress your data if you're pulling in like a zipped file. All right, so a little bit about what we have. So the discovery workspace is split up into categories. So we have like simulation data, Visualization and uh, visualization apps. Sorry, not data. Simulation apps, visualization apps. Uh, there's processing applications. There's utilities, and then there's also a a area where you can load up your custom applications if you wish. All right. So these are all categorized. So there's different versions of them. Uh, you can essentially open up the tab strip and pull out which the applications you wish to run. Uh, there are different versions. You can select which version it is you want. Uh, some of them are meant for multi-processing machines. Some of them are meant for large data sets, small data sets. If you read the instructions, they'll tell you which one it is you're looking for. If not, you can always contact us on Slack. You can always send us a help ticket or uh, send us an email, and we'll be happy to tell you which version it is you're looking for. Launching an application is pretty easy. You just select the app that you wish to launch, click on it, uh, there's some fields you need to fill out, some, uh, in, like it'll ask for an input directory, uh, a tickle script, that's a TCL script, uh, where you want your output directory to go, how much time you, you expect, it, expect your job to run, uh, and so forth. And you fill all that information in, and you click the run button, and your job gets submitted. Something I should tell you about the back, how DesignSafe is built. So DesignSafe is built on a on one of our, our resources and everything that's being done is essentially an event that you're trying to, that you're asking design safe to trigger for you so what happens is depending on uploading a job or executing an application or copying a folder over you're essentially queuing up a job in our system and so once you queue up this job it'll go through this queue it'll once it comes to your job it'll launch it once the job is finished, you'll get a notification saying, hey, your job's now complete. But the idea is to think about everything is happening on a queue. So it's not an instantaneous um, effect. So once I say, copy this folder, it's not gonna happen instantaneously. It's gonna get queued up, it's gonna execute, and then it'll tell you, hey, this job has been completed. Same thing when running an application. Uh, you're es essentially asking it to queue up an application using one of tax many uh, HPC high performance computing resources. And then as soon as that job is ready to run, you'll say you'll get a notification that your job's ready, your job's running, and then when your job's complete, they'll say, hey, we're done, and you can go check out your output. All right, so also we've given you a few tools to be able to process your data once you've ran your job. Uh, one of these tools is the Jupyter Notebook. It's a very easy to understand environment. 
it's a very easy to understand. Uh, we've given you some programming scripts. There's R and there's Python, and we'll run through some examples of each once we get a notebook running of how exactly you execute a job there and how everything links up together. The beauty of Design Safe is, is everything is in one location. So this one location, you can, build, you can build your data, you can query your data, you can visualize it, you can run simulation against it, you can run other applications against it, and they all talk to each other. And they're all one place for you to have, and then of course you can download it later if you wish, or you can just leave it in our, in our Design Safe Cloud. All right, so once you have your job and it runs, uh, you're, it's gonna be outputting your data somewhere. More than likely, you're probably gonna select the default location for it to, for it to uh, output to. And that default location is in your My Data under a directory called Archive. And when you click the Archive, it'll have a bunch of timestamped information. You find the timestamp that you're looking for, open it up, and you'll see your output and your log. All right. One of the other bits of uh, Design Safe that we have is the recon portal, all right? The recon portal is for accessing any reconnaissance data that some of the reconnaissance researchers have uploaded. Um, and if you go to the recon portal, and there's an example of it here, you'll see that there's hurricane data from, her, from the many hurricanes that we've had this season. You'll be able to load to it. Uh, some of the links inside the reconnaissance data are hosted on Design Safe. Some of the links actually take you to other websites, um, other data sites, other images. Uh, you'll, there's a, a wide variety of images that are loaded from the, re, from the reconnaissance teams. If you wish to publish your data within the recon portal, um, my suggestion is filling out a ticket. Tell us where your data is, uh, then what the location information is. There'll be a uh, pinpoint to where the data, where. Uh, the event happened, and then that pinpoint will then lead you to uh, your data set. All right, so if you guys are still with me, and if we haven't lost anybody yet, uh, let's do a quick demonstration on how uh, Design Safe works. We'll run through a really quick uh, preview of what a, a typical workflow might look like, and then we'll run some Jupyter Notebooks, and uh, we'll open it up to some questions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my workspace with you. One second, and let's go to Design Safe. All right, so if everybody can see this, what we have here is Design safe inside of a typical web browser. Uh, I've logged in already, and so it tells me the who, who am I and where I'm welcome to. Uh, if I click on my name here, it will take me to the Design Safe landing screen. That's just the first screen you'll see when you first load it, log into Design Safe. Gives you, once again, a little update of all your information, how much data you've stored, uh, how many apps are currently available. There's a place here for managing your account. This is kind of an important place to go because this is where you will set up any third-party apps. For example, some of the third-party apps would be managing your box.com, managing Dropbox, and managing your Google Drive. All right, to go to the, uh, go to the I'm sorry, to go to the Design Safe main page, just click on the Design Safe logo, and it will take you there. All right, so this is the main screen you'll see. There's some design safe news. Uh, of course, here's that help screen I talked to you about earlier where the frequently asked questions are, where the user guide is, the getting started, submitting a ticket. I highly suggest reading through that user guide. All right, the first place, of course, the heart of design safe is the research workbench. Increase this window just a bit. All right. First place we're gonna hit is the Data Depot. Once again, the Data Depot is set up to be kind of like a file system. Uh, you have folders, you have files, you have directories. Um, you have information about when they were created, what the size is, and all this fun stuff, and you can do a bunch of different, uh, uh, different tools on, on your different um, abilities. 
To add a folder, click the Add button. You have New Folder, New Project. This is where you do a file upload. This is where you do your folder upload and your bulk data transfer. And of course, when we click on that, we suggest going to Globus. Uh, once again, if you go, if you click on that, it brings you to the Globus data transfer guide. I do highly suggest you look through that guide and sign up for a Globus account. Uh, it is probably the easiest way uh, and the most efficient way of moving large amounts of data into Design Safe. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, I'm gonna go ahead, upload a file. I'm gonna click on File Upload. It brings me up to this menu. I'm gonna say Choose Files. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on one of my many files here, see if I can find something. I'm gonna pull my folders up. Uh, my, I'm gonna pull up my heat data here. I'm gonna click Open That. So now you'll see that this file has been staged for upload. I can add other files to it if I wish, and this list will just keep growing. I can remove it as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Begin Upload. And it's gonna go and start moving into and start beginning the upload process. Once again, it's not an instantaneous project process because we are just queuing up a job. And once the job's been queued up, it'll execute. And once the job is done, we'll get that little notification that you just saw saying, hey, your, uh, your folder's been uploaded. Projects, this is once again, I told you where your projects are located at, where you wanna create new projects uh, and be able to view what projects you have available that you've, essentially it's a collaboration effort with other researchers here at here uh, on Design Safe. So if I look at to create a project, just go down here, click new project. It's gonna give you some information about project title, um, then the project identifier, if there's an award number you wanna give, what type of project it is, and if you want to associate to a, to a different project. So this is, this is a, a continuation of another project, or another project was the uh, one that spawned off the idea for this project. You may want to link the two together. Add your keywords, add your description, and any data you want to set, and click Save. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these projects that have already been created, and then we can look through uh, what a typical project looks like. So this project has already been curated. This has already been published. Uh, when it gets published, this is, uh, this is the uh, award for it. And when you has been published, you'll see that this is where that DOI is gonna be, so you can link back to it. And you'll see the, there's different parts of the project here. Uh, we have different folders inside there. Uh, we can do our preview, this is what it will look like when it does become, when it does become um, uh, finally published uh, of all the different event datas, of all the uh, different experiments that are in there. There's nothing in here yet because it hasn't been published yet. Um, but we have some of the information here. If you notice, we have the event data from random waves. We have event data from, uh, cylinder, from one cylinder waves, from two cylinders. And you can go in there and you can, you can view what the different uh, folders and files look like. So like I said, projects is a place where you can, do, you can go and collaborate with other, uh, with other Design Safe members. Now, shared with me is essentially if you have a particular file that you want to share with a, a group of individuals outside of a project. So this is once again more of, it's for collaborating, but it's more of an, an informal collaboration process. So if I click on share with me, um, these are the documents that have been shared. Let me go back up here. Since I was in the near fuel tanks and those are technically shared, that's what's been pulled up for me to view. Box.com, Dropbox, and Google Drive. Those are once again our um, our cloud providers. I've already gone through there and connected my uh, my Google Drive to my Design Safe. Same thing here, my Box.com. I haven't actually set up my Box.com yet, or actually it's asking me to. There, uh, my original grant wasn't valid anymore, so it gave me a link. I can follow that link and it'll, it'll guide me through connecting 
uh, my box.com account to design safe. Published data is once again, this is all publicly available data. Uh, in the published data, we can do our, our public searches. All this stuff has been, um, is available to the public to use. This is the DOI that I was telling you about. If you click citation, it will give you a citation information so you can copy this and link this directly into your document. And once you follow this link across, it comes back to the Design Safe link uh, to where the information is stored at. And once again, this publishes everything. This is a link to all the data, to all the scripts, to any images, all that stuff is located here inside this one project that is accessible through that DOI. And then this is our community data. So the community data is everything, like I noticed, like I mentioned earlier, is kind of an informal way of sharing things with people. One of the things we have in here is some reconnaissance data from some earthquakes. You can click through there. You can see what there's some GeoJSON files. Uh, here's some um, launch latitude files, uh, location files. And you can go through there and see what's available. All right, the other part of this, of course, is the workspace. So I'm going to click on that next. The workspace, once again, has a list of applications that are available. The applications are all categorized in different tab settings. Uh, we have the simulation. We have simulation, visualization. Uh, there's data processing, some utilities, and a place for your own applications to go. So I'm going to look at the simulation apps. Once again, this is what we have available. You'll notice there's a lot of different versions out there. Some of the versions are labeled what they are. If you click on one, it'll give you some information on how this app is set up. You select to basically one, run one of these applications. You select where the input directory is going to be. And so once again, here is my, my, uh, my data. Remember, everything in Design Safe is linked. So I can select where I want this uh, folder to go to, if that's where I want it to. I'm going to go ahead and drag that in to my input directory. I can give it a tickle script to say, all right, this is where I want to do this. And you know, I can copy and paste an individual here. So I'm going to just say, all right, you know what? I'm going to actually go to a default location here and just run our example file. So I'm going to take that example file that goes to our mock user. And I'm going to put in this free field tickle script that's sitting inside that uh, free field analysis version. I'm going to put that inside there. I'm going to give it a runtime. Now, the runtime is kind of a expected runtime. Once again, everything you do on Design Safe is being queued up. So what you want to do is you want to tell this queuing system how long you think your job is going to take. And so then the queuing system will take that job and put that on the queue and, uh, and um, schedule it accordingly. So I'm going to say, you know what, I think this job is only going to take, um, say, 10 minutes to run. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say day. Um, this is going to be design, like spell, design safe 101. Open seas. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it the uh, default output directory. So after this runs, we can go look at what the default directory looks like. But it's going to be in the archive folder under, under a folder called jobs. And then it's going to have a timestamp attached to it. So once this is all set, I'm going to go ahead and click run. I believe this, this um, should be available to me. So it's going to submit the job. We can keep track of the job here in this little job status menu. So now you see that I already had a job called day mat run is running. You'll also notice I have this day design safe 101 open seas. I just started and now it's in the pending state. As soon as it gets out of pending, it's going to get submitted. Uh, then it's going to run. And when the job finishes running, it's going to say finished and my output will it'll give me a heads up telling me my output's available. Some of the other things that we have available here. All right. So now if you notice, my job has now been staged. And while that's running, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go through some of these other tab slots. 
I'm going to go to a Jupyter Notebook. So now Jupyter Notebooks are really nice because once you have data that's been, uh, that you ran, and you have now those data sitting inside of your, uh, your my data, and you want to be able to view it and be able to run against it and run some quick scripts against it, you can open up this tool called the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with that or not, but essentially a Jupyter Notebook is a really simple web IDE that we have given you on DesignSafe. Um, when you first jump in there, I've already logged in. It's going to ask you to log in and sign up and go through that process here. But some things I want to point out to you. First off, this is where you land on Jupyter. It's got all the folders that you'll normally see in DesignSafe. You have community, you have your my data, you have projects, you have public. All right. Uh, before you start a notebook, make sure you're in your my data directory. Anything outside of this directory, anything over here is temporary. So anything outside of these folders will be deleted uh, at the end of your section. End of your session. So make sure you go into my data. Uh, once again, here we have folders, we have a bunch of files. I'm gonna go into my archive. This is where your running folder is. I'm gonna go into jobs. Okay, that's where the jobs is. And if you notice, here are my job IDs, my job folders that have the timestamp and job ID that ran on. I'm gonna just pull one of these up. And this is that free field effect of Jupyter that ran and where it uh, outputted to. So I'm gonna open that up. So now there's some raw data inside of here. Here's some acceleration data that's just sitting out there that ran from my experiment that I ran, all right? Now this is really nice and, nice and handy. I can actually look at the numbers. If I wanted to run a script to be able to analyze this data, I can. Um, but this particular notebook, actually, this particular run actually generates a notebook for me. So here's a little notebook that has automatically been created from my data that I just ran. And we can see what it does. All right, it does, it runs from Agave, imports Agave Pi. This is kind of a necessary thing to have if you ever want to execute any jobs. Um, here's some job description information so I can run this job through Design Safe directly if I wanted to. But here's some post processing results. So I'm going to import and I'm going to go ahead and plot in. Uh, this is through my data. Uh, this is from this account. I'm going to be replacing it and pulling my own information. And I'm going to go ahead and plot some information in here. So here's acceleration versus time. And there's my plot. Uh, here's some other data analysis I've done. Here's some profiles of that data that I can run. Uh, if you notice that all this stuff is coming in from those data sets. So we can actually do, and the beauty of it is, is Jupyter also has LaTeX built in. So I can actually run a, um, This runs here. Uh, it actually runs. Let me rerun this. And see if we can get that uh, Jupyter, uh, that LaTeX report to actually build. Uh, so it's really nice is Jupyter has built in LaTeX support. So essentially what that means is you could, if anybody's familiar with uh, writing articles in LaTeX, you can do that directly in Jupyter. What's also nice is now you can build a research paper and have that research paper be dynamic. So you can dynamically build uh, graphs and tables uh, and plots and even animation files. So while this notebook is running, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the other uh, joys of Jupyter. So one of the other things we also have given you is uh, access to, Mat to MATLAB. And so here, is Mat I just ran a little version of MATLAB. You run MATLAB, go to your data processing for a regular data set or for a large data set. Uh, MATLAB actually runs as a, um, as a job itself. You tell it what you want as your desktop resolution, uh, how long you want the job to run, give it a name, and then execute it. So I had this day Mat will run one already running. It runs it inside of a web browser for me. And this is full MATLAB. Also, this has access to your My Data folders as well. So here is all of my data that I have access to that I can pull in and run. You can also then, of course, save your MATLAB scripts. You can execute any other MATLAB script that you want um, and be able, to re be able to save your data and save it back into your My Data and then access it again. The other cool things, of course, you can do is you can run 
uh, Jupyter, you can run an R, you can run R scripts in Jupyter. If you're not familiar with R, R is a really good, really powerful language to do data querying with. Uh, so here is just, I've generated uh, numbers from zero to two pi, and then there's my numbers there. I can set y equal to sine of x, you know, so there's my y. Uh, I, can, I can then tell r to plot that for me, so it plots a, a nice little sine curve. Uh, and then, of course, that training data that I pulled in earlier, we can then run some analysis on that. So, all right, I'm going to just look at to see what the data looks like. Well, you know, this is what the data has. It's got some... Uh, longitudinal data on in there for me from uh, a couple bridges, I believe is what the training data is. And then I could get some get some information on that. Uh, here's the summary. Here's some summary on information of what the min, what the median, uh, what the max values are. Uh, I can look at different values or different lines. I can look at the logarithm. I can take the logarithm of a particular column of data, and then get more uh, summary on it. And then of course we can do some plots. So there's this thing in R called uh, ggplot, which is essentially the grammar of plotting. You can add a, a canvas, and then you can add points to your canvas. So I'm just gonna take those geometrical points and add those to it. Um, and then take those same points and add a title. And then change my points around and say, hey, if it's a certain, if, if uh, columns meet a certain criteria, I can say make that criteria a different color. I can also say, hey, add a shape to it, like triangles and circles. And so now we can get some more information out of it. Remember, as I said, part of what Design Safe is about is analyzing data sets, finding the story behind the data sets. So we've given you tools like MATLAB and like Jupyter Notebooks to be able to um, pull that story out. And then, of course, once I have this built, I can now share this with other people. I can also publish this directly as part of my project and publish that out and get a DOI link that links back to not just the raw data, but also the script that I wrote to be able to analyze that data. And then of course, there's other things you can do as well. Uh, R is a, or I mean, Jupyter is a very powerful place to be. You can actually run code inside here as well. So here's a little bit of Python code that solves uh, a heat dissipation problem. And so, you know, I can then calculate the numbers of what's going on through the heat dis dissipation, and then I can animate and plot that as it is. So while it's running, you'll see that the heat's slowly dissipating away. And then of course, we can also do three dimensional versions of it. So once again, uh, this notebook takes a little bit to pull up because it is a lot of data in there, but so we'll let this thing run for a little bit. But you'll see that this has uh, a 3D, a 3D data set that's been contoured out. So, what Design Save does for you is it brings out your entire uh, life cycle of research and enables it to be part of your workflow. Um, it is open enough that we, so you can put this, either take all of it and put it inside your existing workflow, or just use parts of it in your existing workflow. Uh, but it'll support both. So you can use as much as as uh, much of Design Safe as you need, or as little bit as Design Safe as you as you need. Uh, but like I said, the idea behind it is is to support the end-to-end -end work workflow cycle of your research, um, where you can run your data set, analyze your data, and then of course share it with other people. And so here is a 3D heat of uh, data set that I ran earlier and then plotted it out so we see where the hot points are, where the cold points are, and then look at the data set itself. I'm going to pull this back to our slides. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, by the way, is you can view uh, and add any metadata to the files that you upload. I'm sorry, I kind of missed that. Uh, but yeah, we do support all the metadata and you can search on that metadata as well. All right, um, so just a quick wrap up. Uh, we, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to join us today. Uh, Design Safe has become a very useful tool for a lot of engineers and research scientists. Uh, it is, like I said, open enough that we can integrate into your existing workflow. 
Uh, we have plenty of staff on hand if you have any questions on how to integrate this directly into your workflow. And this was just an introduction. We just want to show you all the highlight pieces of what you can do with Design Safe, how to get started on it. And we will be bringing you other, uh, other webinars throughout this uh, semester, one of which will be how do you use some, that Agave Pi that I told you, how can you use a Jupyter Notebook to be able to launch jobs on our supercomputers and be able to take that data and run analysis work on it. We'll have a webinar dedicated to that. We'll also have a webinar dedicated to using uh, all the data, different data transfer methods because those can be a little confusing, we understand that. So we'll have a webinar dedicated to that. And then we'll bring one or two uh, of the domain scientists and have them talk about how they've been able to integrate Design Safe into their research and into their workflow. Uh, once again, I'm glad you guys were able to join me today. I uh, hope this was useful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, you can email us at training at designsafe.ci.org. If there's any specific training you'd like to see, feel free to email us that as well. Uh, fill out a work a ticket if you like. and uh, please join us on the Design Safe Slack channel um, and be able to ask us additional questions there. Um, we'll keep this channel going for another 10 minutes or so. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit us up on the chat and we have plenty of staff online to be able to answer those. All right. Hey, thanks again, everybody.